So, the aim of this podcast is to work through an example of an identity in vector calculus. And what we're going to show is that the curl of a gradient vanishes. So, here we have the gradient of a scalar. The gradient is a vector, so we can take the curl of that vector, and this vanishes. The curl of the gradient of the scalar field phi vanishes. The ingredients we're going to need are what is a gradient, and that I've written out here, and then what is the curl, and the curl for a general vector field, call this A here, has this form here. Note, by the way, that when I say it vanishes, this is a vector, so this is a zero vector. So it's a three-dimensional vector with each component vanishing. So now all we've got to do is take these definitions, put them into our identity, turn the handle, and see that it vanishes. And I'm going to do that on the next slide. So what we're going to do now is to take our desired identity, the left-hand side of it here, and just write it out explicitly. And I've started doing this here. So we have a curl, and we obtain this from looking at the ve vector product of these two terms. And we can write that out in the first row, i, the unit vector, the second row, the derivative with respect to x, and the third row is the first entry, the i component of this vector, and this is going to be the derivative with respect to x of phi. So then we can write out the next two columns here, and what we obtain is j d by dy d phi dy, and then k d by dz, and then the derivative of our scalar field phi with respect to z. And this here is what we need to calculate to obtain this. So again, the bottom row is the components of the gradient of phi, the i component, the j component, the k component, and the other rows tell you what the curl is of this particular vector. So now we just expand it. And what we're going to obtain is i times, and now it's this acting on that, minus this acting on this. So it's, let's just write that out explicitly, d by dy acting on d phi dz minus d by dz acting on d phi dy, close brackets. So this is this acting on that, minus this acting on that. And now we just write out the other two terms, bearing in mind that there is a subtlety with a minus sign for the second component, the j component, and now what we do is we have this acting on this, minus this acting on this, so that's d by dx acting on d phi dz minus d by dz acting on d phi dx, close the brackets. And the final term plus k, and you may wish perhaps to pause the video, write it out yourself just to check you get it right. If, you do, if you'd like to do that, pause now. Welcome back. And for this component, we're going to look at this acting on that minus this acting on this. So it's d by dx acting on d phi d y minus d by d y acting on d phi d x close brackets so what we see is that we have got a vector these are the three components and now what we want to do is to see what these components are 
And what we notice is that here we have the second derivative of phi with respect to first z and then y. And here we have, with a minus sign, the second derivative of phi with respect to first y and then z. So this and this are actually exactly the same, but with the order of the mixed derivatives swapped around. So here it's first differentiate phi with respect to z and then with respect to y. And then here, don't forget the minus sign, we differentiate first with respect to y and then with respect to z. So by equality of mixed partial derivatives, this and this will be the same, and due to the minus sign, they will cancel. And you can check explicitly that exactly the same occurs here, and exactly the same thing occurs here. So what we see is, let me just get it into a pen form, therefore the curl of the gradient of phi is equal to zero, if you wish, you could make it clear that it's a vector by underlining it, um, due to the equality of mixed partial derivatives. So what we've done here is we've just looked at what the definitions were of these things, substituted them in and looked at the components and seen that everything vanished. Now, on the next slide, just to finish this, I'm just going to write out a different identity. And if you'd like to practice, you can work out in a very similar way that identity and get some confidence that you're able to do this. So I'll write that on the next slide. So finally, as promised, here is an exercise for you. Calculate the curl of a vector field and then the divergence of that curl and show that it vanishes. Note that this is a scalar. Here we have a vector. This is a vector operator, but we have a scalar product. So the overall answer is a scalar. Again, you'll need to use equality of mixed partial derivatives and I encourage you to try it. Workings are on the next sheet, but without any words. And with that, I will stop this podcast, and I hope it's been useful to you.